happens in a typical system design interview. Okay. I think I like this answer. The idea is true. You are trying to assess the ability of a candidate to think through a problem and come up with a viable solution, which is a polite way of saying that, hey, this is an aptitude test. That's what the system design round has become these days. It's not really understanding your experience or your behaviors in a technical fashion. It's become more of, do you know what load balancing is? Uh, do you understand what a token bucket algorithm will look like? It's not about what did you do? How did you do it? What did you think of? And why did you think this way? It's, there's lesser and lesser of that in the recent system design rounds that I'm looking at and the bot confirmed it. Okay. During the interview, you may be asked to define the scope and objective of the system. Yeah, this is a pretty important part of the system design interview where you look at the requirements from a user perspective and think about how those requirements can be put roughly in an engineering way. For example, if you have Google Docs and you know you have like hundreds of people writing on the same doc, um, the engineering problem here is building a collaborative system where there are multiple requests from different parts of the world and uh, that document has to be consistent to all of the users at the same time. This is this is the engineering side of things. While as a customer, when I type things and my friend types things, I should be able to see it. That, that's how the requirement will come up. Uh, so you convert that to an engineering requirement. The second part is break down the problem. I mean, it, it happens in the first phase itself where you take the scope and the objectives of the system. They are not you know, divorced from the requirements. Um, I have seen folks saying that this is the function requirement, this is a non-function requirement. That doesn't make much sense to me because like the, the function requirements, yeah, I understand. These are the things which the system needs to do. Non-function requirements are these are the ways in the system needs to behave. I, I get it. Uh, you have an overall understanding of the system. But when you come across different requirements, each requirement has a non-function requirement. Like, for example, when you are talking about a collaborative editor, it needs to be consistent. It could be fast. While uh, if you're looking at, let's say, a registration, it needs to be fast and consistent. It may not be available. So each requirement has a set of non-function requirements and it's just wasting your time to iterate out the non-function requirements. You, you can take those non-function requirements, requirements when you're explaining that particular requirement. Uh, so yeah, I think this is more like how people have been doing it. Therefore, I answer it this way. It's a bad point uh, in my opinion. Separating out point number one and point number two is not a good idea in my opinion. You can take it together. Choose appropriate technologies. Yes. That's a really, really good point, choosing appropriate technologies. Till now, ChatGPT, you are doing really well. Uh, designing the overall architecture of the system, absolutely looking at the components of the system, how are they going to work together, um, achieving the goals of the system. Yeah, I mean, it's easy to say this, of course, doing it is tough, but at a, at a high level, what is a typical system design interview? This is exactly what it is. Um, addressing scalability and reliability, coupled with the point below, which talks about testability of a system and how you're going to debug the system if required. This is an excellent point. Once the system is done, you need to validate whether your assumptions are making sense. When you send a request and goes to another system, what happens if it fails over here? So that's fault tolerance, reliability. Um, what happens if it goes over here, which succeeded, and then it comes back and goes back. So you validate whether a system request gives you the right response. Um, and this is a brilliant answer. Overall, I think this is a very, very good answer. I would give it a strong four, maybe a 4.5 out of five. Uh, this is the highest score I've given to any chat GPT answer yet, any AI answer. Uh, one small thing that could be improved here is when you're talking about the design of a system, you could also talk about the APIs that you will be writing. But practically in a system design interview, doing everything is not possible. So this is a really, really good answer. And congratulations, chat GPT, you, you are, taking over the human space of advice when it comes to system design. I need to close down my channel, guys. What's going on now?